Assalamu alaikum, Morani Madad, Sasrikal, Bonjour Montreal. I'm your host, Sohela Nyazi for Prime TV. Normally, you know, I do fashion and food, but today I'll be doing something quite different, politics. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into, but I'm really excited because this gentleman, I think, will have a lot more to talk about than just politics. So here at the Pure Fond, Roxborough. Borough Hall. Borough Hall. Thank you very much. I'm getting some help over here. Um, I have Mr. Dimitria. Dimitri, base. Dimitri Base. Base. Base, like baseball, as he just said to me. So, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, wa alaikum salam. Tikanis. Kala, pospas. Kala, de mila linikas. Milas ligo. Warna melisto uh, Dimitri. <laughs> Saga po signomi. She's good. She's good. <laughs> si? Elado. Criono. And that's all I'm going to say today. <laughs> I learned my Greek just for you today. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It was really hard last night, 1 a.m. in the morning. I had no yeah. idea what I just said in my greeting, but I learned Did it last you? night as well. Did you? No, I Well, you just said, absolutely. okay, well, I'm, yeah. well, I know you're quite connected with the, the Pakistani and Hindu uh, community in Montreal. So let me start off by saying I've never talked about politics before, so this may be new for me. You've probably done tons of interviews about politics, but we're going to kind of do something a little bit different today. Obviously, I'm going to ask you some personal questions on why are you the mayor? What have you done for us? What are you going to do for us? So first of all, you've been the mayor of Pierrefonds, Roxborough for since 2013. Am I right? I've been, uh, yes. This is my second mandate as mayor. Okay. I was a councillor before for four years and oh. I was also in the municipal world. I was a director of uh, sports, recreation, uh, culture and social development uh, for 25 years before that. So oh. my whole path really into the municipal world has been uh, really natural for me because this is where I started working for a city and uh, evolving to the position that I hold uh, today. And what brought you to the interest of going into politics? Well, you know, I've always been someone that's been connected with the community. I've been someone that's coached, that's volunteered, that's been a part of uh, the social fabric of, uh, of this community. Oh, I and like that word, social fabric. I'm going to use that. Okay. <laughs> One that, uh, we're, you know, because you're in fashion as yes, well, so we course. have to somehow integrate <laughs> we, uh, fabric. We have to make this conversation somewhat uh, enlightening for me too, no. <laughs> but, but, but for me, I mean, uh, a community that uh, my parents decided, uh, you know, very early in the early 70s to come and settle uh, when there was virtually nothing on the West Island, mm -hmm. uh, came and we saw the development of, of where we live. And, and this is what increased encouraged me really to be a part of, uh, of the community in, in, in that grassroots level uh, as I was through the years and then evolve into the, the professional capacity that I hold today. Okay, wow. Um, I find that very fascinating because I know it's a lot to carry on your shoulders, correct? It is. I mean, it, anytime you're representing uh, the public who gives you uh, at least their confidence to uh, hold a seat like, like this uh, in a community, I mean, uh, has to be... Uh, taken seriously, uh, but it also can't be taken for granted. No. Uh, we're there, we're public servants, uh, we're there to uh, work for the citizens, and this is something that uh, oftentimes in the municipal uh, uh, political world we tend to forget. Uh, we forget sometimes who works for who, and uh, we are here uh, primarily uh, because the citizens choose us to be there to represent them, and we can never forget that. No, absolutely not, and I think um uh, the, the subject of politics and people sometimes hear about it, like as, as myself, we forget that it's actually about the people too. If we don't know who to support and who's going to support us back, I mean, there's really no point of being in politics, right? And I find that um, being the mayor, I mean, which is, I, I would say it's like meeting a celebrity, right? Because it is. It's like, you know, people want to take pictures with you. Like, can I take a selfie with you? Anyone wants to take a selfie with you, you have to consider yourself as a celebrity. Well, you it, do know that. Th there's a certain uh, privilege that comes with it as yes. well. I mean, certainly we, we are, uh, uh, we're, we're really blessed to, to be in the position that we're in. And we're held in such high esteem by the, the, the large segment of the population. But, you know, today, folks, uh, I'm with a real celebrity. And we're making no, sure you know. that we, we, we show her card right here. And uh, for me, it's always an honor. I mean, all joking aside, for me... Uh, uh, I have never changed uh, from who I was uh, when, when, when I was a boy to who I am now uh, in my 50s, mayor of a city. I mean, the privilege that I get today doing this with you is oh, really you. A, a part of, of who We're going to have a lot do. more interviews to do. We're going to do some food stuff. And maybe, By the way, I love your costume, as you <laughs> thought I said when I said I love your outfit. He's like, outfit? I meant your, uh, of course, I love Thank your you. shirt, Thank I love you. your suit. Where's Thank your you. shirt from? Sorry, I'm just Well, gonna. this is uh, John Lennon's shirt. Uh, 
uh, John it's, Lennon. Yeah, it's a John, John Lennon uh, uh, sh shirt that uh, they have a series of them uh, available, and uh, they Where have these really this? funky patterns. Uh, I, I believe the Bay carries them, wow. and uh, they have all these really sort of modern, fresh uh, colors and patterns for the summer. And I knew that I was uh, going to be an inter interviewed here by not only uh, a food and fashion, uh, but also this remarkable woman who uh, we can talk fashion, uh, we can talk food. And uh, I've offered my services uh, actually to uh, do a segment one day and yes, cook up some food. Greek food. Yes, and I'm looking forward to it. So you're going to teach me something Greek and I'm going to teach you something Pakistani. Fantastic. Okay. So um, now another question. I was reading up on you a little bit and we are fa Facebook friends. and. Um, I'm curious. Uh, so you're uh, into Skid Row. I uh, yes. I uh, I played in uh, bands uh, in my in my youth, and uh, we we grew up uh, in the '80s. And in the '80s, it was uh, glam rock metal. And, yeah. Uh, I, I I kept in touch with uh, that community, and uh, I found I that very fascinating. It. I still enjoy it. I like all kinds of music, but I mean, for me, that was my era. And uh, I continue to uh, not only listen to it, but I continue to play. And uh, and uh, maybe we can even do a segment uh, music related and well, have that a guitar was my... and, uh, and perform live yeah. for all of you. Well, that day. was the other question, and you already answered it before I asked it. <laughs> do you play still? Because I, I you know, I'm not going to say stalked your Facebook, but obviously I went skim through it. Um, and I was looking at your musically inclined, you love music. I'm from the same era as you, so I loved Skid Row as well. I didn't understand a lot of the music back then, uh, but I liked the beats, and that was good <laughs> enough for me, because growing up in a Pakistani community, we were forbidden for a lot of things, like don't go to clubs, don't go to music concerts, because it's going to make you, a, you know, not a normal person. I, mean, I turned out fine, right? So I'm okay. But um, the other thing I was looking at as well, um, the heat. I saw all those, <laughs> like no air conditioning and, and everything happening in Montreal. Now, I want to ask you, how do you feel with the temperature happening right now and how the people in the community are surviving? I, I personally love the heat. Okay. I mean, there, for, for the short amount of time that we're exposed to it, I think uh, I, I'm able to thankfully uh, tolerate it. Uh, I know that there is a large segment of the population that uh, has a great difficulty in this heat. Yes. Uh, we uh, here at the borough have uh, put in some uh, safeguards in place. I mean, we've opened up our public buildings where they're air conditioned to allow people to have uh, I was looking at some rest. The and, and that we've negotiated as well with some of the community pools to uh, have their facilities open longer, yes. allow public free of charge to go and use these facilities. I mean, uh, we're constantly uh, communicating information. I think uh, when you're in this type of work, uh, the main issue for folks is to have them well informed. Yes. And uh, we do such an outstanding <coughs> job here with our communications personnel. And uh, we, we've made all, many efforts to try to at least create some sense of uh, security in the population and allow them to know that we're uh, we're there for them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, absolutely. Anyway. I agree with you. And mm -hmm. just to, to tell you that I actually knew that the pools were open because of what you had posted and commented about that I actually spoke to Hamsa for radio the other day saying that um, the Roxboro area has some swimming pools that are open and they're free so there's no cost, which I think is great. And I think as a mayor, I think it's really important that you you give to the community to see that you're you're helping them out because like i said don't know much about politics but when i was growing up and the mayors back then i'm not saying they did anything wrong or anything but it didn't really feel like there was anything happening so they were more like i'm the mayor i'm there but nothing's happening to support it so we were voting but we didn't know what we were voting for and then when we voted we didn't know what we were getting in exchange so one thing congratulations Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to ask you, so what have you, pretend like you're not who you are. What has he done, what has Mr. Bass done for the community of Roxborough and Pure Fall? <clears throat> well, first of all, we've, we've, uh, we're multidimensional uh, individuals. You touched mm -hmm. on it briefly. I mean, social media has helped us. Uh, you know, reach out to a larger audience and a larger community. Where once upon a time, politicians were seen maybe once a month at uh, at a council meeting, for example, for those yeah. that would come. Now we're we're 24/7 connected to to the people, and uh, so we have to react in, in the same way. And so uh, I think the public appreciates when you're able to do that. Uh, what has uh, Pierre Fall done? Let's say Pierre Fall Roxborough done. I mean, we've we've invested. Uh, 
tens of millions of dollars in our roadways where we have 250 kilometers wow. of residential streets that we can't possibly do all at the same time. And so we've invested. We have this program where we do our three-year annual, uh, three-year capital expenditures uh, planning. Uh, we've uh, updated parks and green spaces, invested millions of dollars in creating play surfaces so that we can have sport accessible so less to all. Potholes? You know, we don't have many uh, potholes. Uh, as far as I remember, I don't see any. Uh, we know that uh, we are an older community, particularly mm -hmm. Roxborough, uh, that celebrated 100 years in 2014. Wow. Uh, you okay. can understand that the infrastructure uh, it takes a toll. And so mm -hmm. we have this program in place, you know, a 10 year planning program where we're able to address certain areas within the community and, and upgrade. We also subsidize the nonprofit organizations that are doing valuable work in the community, providing services to vulnerable, you know, uh, people. And so, you know, oftentimes when you're in this position, uh, we, we maybe not always, but sometimes tend to disconnect from the grassroots uh, initiatives, you know, and, and the groups that provide services to the population, unless you need that service, right. you will never know of them. And no. so social media has helped us at least reach out to a larger audience and promote their uh, you know their their work as well within a community. And so that, that's exciting Absolutely for Absolutely agreed. And social media being one of the most, I guess you could say, executed ways and forms of advertising yourself as a person, which you know obviously has changed in the past five years. Yeah. Huge. There's Instagram, there's Snapchat, there's, you know, there's, I'm going to, I was going to say birdie, it's Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Meows and dogs and cats and Facebook. Um, it's extraordinary because I also grew up with a generation we didn't have any of that. Now it's just, do you want to know where that person is? If they're lying, you can just check if they're around the area because they'll tell you. Yeah. So I find that that's one of our assets at this moment. Um, I wanted to bring to a point where I know you talk a lot about green. Can you elaborate on green space or? We have over 70 parks and green spaces in mm -hmm. Kirkland Roxborough. We're very proud of it. We have a, a tree canopy program where we are regreening the community, you know, and allowing us to, even though we're an older community and there's a lot of trees and parks and green spaces, we still can do better. Uh, certainly, we've seen with the uh, ash uh, disease that we have, yes. um, we, we know that if we don't plant a diverse uh, species of, uh, of trees, uh, we could be faced with a similar situation within the next 5, 10 or whatever number of years uh, we get infested by a certain uh, illness that affects a certain type of tree. And so we've been conscious of that. We have great people here that work in Pierrefonds Roxborough that look at this continuously. We work with the citizens. We have tree programs as well through our uh, Eco Cartier uh, who offers them at a reduced cost for folks that want to plant trees. We have horticulture experts as well that work with the citizens and give them the tips that they would need to be able to do this on their private properties. Uh, and we also have our three uh, uh, nature parks that we have within Pierrefonds, which is uh, unusual for us. Okay, we'll we have, have to know about that. We'll have to put that on, on our... Yeah, on our and we have our, 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 our big... Uh, we have our Cap Saint-Jacques, we have our Bois de Liesse, we have Riviere, uh, uh, the Cheval Blanc. And so we have nature parks that people have access to go and at least see the greenery and, uh, and some of the uh, native species that are within oh, these wow. areas. And so we're proud of that. We're unique in the way that we are in our 30 kilometer sort of stretch of our, of our community. Uh, you don't know that, but it's about 30 kilometers wide. And I so didn't know that's, that. that's enormous, you know, when you look that at is, a community yeah. that we. I think that's community. fascinating because a lot of people don't realize being next to trees and being out in the wilderness or, or next to nature is so therapeutic for for anyone and um, I'm not a green thumb person but lately I've grown a garden and I'm very proud of it and I have no squirrels or rabbits attacking it at this moment and, <laughs> I, and, I, and I felt so relaxed every morning when I go look at it and I appreciate it and I talk to them and I you know I, I, I eat from it and I think it's extraordinary and I'm sure a lot of people watching us will be like yeah we do this all the time where have you been well I've been secluded and I didn't really think about green and plants but when I drive in West Island I drive in the area and I look at trees it gives you a sense of relief I don't know if that's the right word but sense of peace as well at the same time and I think that's amazing mm -hmm. and you need some more greenery in your office which reminds me well we're Thank actually you. changing the windows uh, this yes, week I know. so <laughs> once that happens we'll be able to uh, add some greenery what you don't know and I know that we hopefully will do a segment I know all joking aside and, and yeah. have a cooking segment or whatever I'd, I'd love to come back and do something like that but what you also don't know is that I'm an avid gardener 
I have 500 varieties of plants in my yards. And really? My, and, and my house. Okay, we're been, going to his garden. It's been visited by the Horticultural Society and, and West Island Citizen Advocacy who do their wow. garden visits in June. And so it's nothing spectacular, okay. but it's my paradise. And you mentioned it. It's therapeutic when you're close it to is. the earth. It does something for the soul or to the soul. Absolutely. And uh, it's it's my peace uh, among other passions that I have. But that that is one thing too. Do that you have a, a food garden? Like, have you? Grown? I do. I have. Okay. Uh, many vegetables and herbs uh, that I grow in my garden okay. and uh, there's it's a trial and error. And how long did you start this? I've been doing this since I was in my early 20s when I bought oh, my wow. first home. Okay. Uh, when I bought my first home, uh, aside from getting the bills in my name, <laughs> I, I, I said if I'm going to get bills in my name, I'm going to make sure that I have my own garden and, and try to That's eat That's a good way of putting it. I do it in my own little way uh, as best I can. And my kids, uh, my, my daughters uh, are, are, are... You have two children, right? I have two right? daughters. Yes. I have a 21-year-old and I have a 6-year-old. Uh, my 21-year-old wow. I've adopted from China. Oh, nice. Who's a remarkable, remarkable young woman in uh, okay. Concordia right now. And my little one uh, is, uh, you know, all full of uh, energy and, and keeping me uh, younger than I, than I am. And, I think uh, that's really important. Blessings. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's so important um, with children in this new day and age. They need to feel even more connected to, our, our, to us and getting them involved in things like this. I mean, I know when I was growing up, and, and this, I have two children, and... Um, they're, they're always on constantly on their phones and their iPads and they're playing Wii and I don't know what other stuff it's called on the box, so the Xbox. Xbox. So I'm like, you know, when I grew up, I played with rocks. But who I, buys them that stuff? I, uh, okay, stop talking. <laughs> and, you know, I used, to, I used to do hopscotch. Do you know what I mean? Like, we used to play Monopoly. We used to, do you remember hide and seek? Like, that was like the most popular game. Yeah. Now you look at the children and, and obviously... I mean, we're all at fault, but it's kind of like, well, those games are not offered as much as before, and they're, they're, I guess you could say they're social networking. Children don't play the same games. So I'm like, I was playing with Barbies at the age of 12, yeah. but hence leads back to fashion, of course. My daughter's like, why would I play with a Barbie at the age of 12? I'm like, because it's fun. So you know how you guys played with cars and trucks and you made little, like we don't do, they don't do any of that anymore. You know, it's a social, it's a social, I think, uh issue in our community where today for take take for example i mean one of the most beautiful days of the year mm -hmm. and uh, you drive down any street in any park and everything is virtually uh, deserted uh, <laughs> where once upon a time i mean <laughs> we, we never came packed. in the house i mean from morning to night we were out and about whatever we were doing yeah and so uh, certainly it's the responsibility of uh, the city and the community and, and the parents make all efforts to try to provide the services and the infrastructure uh, but it starts at home. Everything starts at home. Yeah. Culture starts at home. Uh, sports start at home. Uh, language starts and faith. Uh, all that starts at home. And if, I c if we can't do that within our home, it's very difficult for the state and the government to be able to do that for you. And so, yeah. you know, the example is within our own four walls. And so if our children grow up in that type of environment with parents that push them, uh, particularly with the cultural communities, I have to say, because I come from a cultural community as well, and I think for us, family was very important, and it allowed for us to be strong within that family unit right. and allow us all the opportunities later on in life, uh, where uh, I think because of social media, because of technology, uh, we've sort of gotten away a little bit from that, 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 that social yeah. fabric again within our home. And uh, I think that that's where we need to constantly be working uh, towards raising children that are yes. going to be better citizens one day in life. Absolutely agreed. Now, um, I'm going to tell you something really funny. Um, you know, in the Jewish religion, they have, um, on the evening of Friday, they basically shut everything down until the sun sets, till the sun rises, and they have, I don't, can't remember what it's called now for some odd reason, Shabbat, it's called Shabbat. So I, I deal with a lot of these customers, and, and one day I said to my children, I go, let's try it. They're like, try what? I said, we're going to shut off our cell phones and iPads and TV, nothing electronic, and we're going to spend time together on a Friday afternoon after the sun went down. Not easy. I am telling you, I think we wanted to pull our hair out, because we played maybe one deck of cards, maybe Monopoly, maybe ate something, 
And then the phone rang and we all ran to go get it. And we just, we said, no, we're not going to. But the reason they do this, obviously, I mean, I don't know much about religion and culture, but they do it to basically keep themselves united and connected. And I thought it was a really interesting way of them following their faith. So I said, you know what? Every Friday for two and a half hours, at least we're starting slow. We're going to disconnect from everything. Do you know, even if we take a drive, okay, fine, the, mo the car driving is not a part of it, but even if we're taking a drive and going to a park, I have no problem. And believe it or not, we've done it almost six Fridays now, and it's worked out quite well. Fantastic. Yeah, we're more connected. We talk about things. Um, fine, we do some YouTube videos while we're at it. You know, sorry, but I mean, we're kind of connecting as a family, more united and, and, and see, we cook together, which is, you know, a hard thing to do with children and their schedules and their sleeping times and the patterns and everything. But um, mm -hmm. I think that's something we need to initiate. I think the community should have something that they do once a month, maybe. I don't know, it's just a suggestion where parents and kids are involved into doing some sort of activity together. Have you ever seen... Um, Race, uh, the, the, the show Amazing Race. Amazing Race, where it's a live TV yeah. show where they do. I think we should do something like that in Montreal. Well, you know, in. in Maybe uh, next summer. You, you've segued into it because uh, I'm glad, because now I can tell you what, uh, what the plans are. Okay. Uh, we have. Uh, I want to be a part of it. We have nonprofit okay. organizations, of course, <laughs> that do all types of activities for families, uh, especially to try to bring everyone together. Uh, we're looking at uh, creating a public garden. Um, and creating sort of a, an outdoor kitchen facility, something that I oh, saw when I was okay. in, uh, in Nova Scotia. And I've asked my services to look at this, where we can create uh, an outdoor cooking area where mm -hmm. we can have families and organizations get together and uh, create that sort of communal uh, spirit within, uh, within a green space or a park. And so that's in the works in Pierrefonds Rocks. But I think it's very important that we get out and about uh, you know, we can certainly sit back with social media and complain about virtually everything and be non-accountable uh, in the way that things are set up through social right. media. Uh, but we can also uh, rise up and, and make the difference and become the difference. And uh, we've always done that here. Uh, we have an extraordinary staff. Uh, I have uh, counselors that are devoted as well that work okay. really hard for the community. And uh, I can never, ever take anything for granted here because this is what made me who I am in exactly. Pierrefonds, Roxborough, when my parents decided so many years ago to come here. Plus, we have 70 or so cultural communities represented in Pierrefonds, Roxborough. I mean, can any of us name, you know, 60, 70, 80 countries? We'd all have a hard time no. doing that. No. And we have, you know, that many communities, if not more, that are, you know, living uh, uh, in harmony uh, together within my community. And so that, that, that makes us realize, you know, that you know, a peace and, and harmony uh, exists, you know, if we can do it with our neighbors and on our streets and in our Yeah, and you know, kind of areas. unite them together. And I like, like you said, the garden thing is a great idea. And you've seen those cooking shows where yeah. families compete against each other. Like, we should have something like anything. I mean, it could be like a weekend and we can say, you know, the Italian group and the Greek group and the Pakistan group and the Thai group, all of us get to cook and all of us get to feed each other. And then, you know, it could be like live on a segment on Prime TV because it's food and fashion, <laughs> right? Um, we can do something like that, which would be great. And we can do it, you know. We're going to use social media as our leverage here, of course. And we can publicize it in a way as well and, you know, get people to come in, maybe raise some money for some sort of foundation, which brings me to the second uh, part of my interview, cancer. Yep. I see you're very closely connected to cancer um, cause. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Well. My uh, philosophy has always been you find a passion and you work towards uh, supporting it in the best way that you can. Uh, you know, when we were young, everybody that talked about cancer, we used to say, uh, you know, my gosh, I don't know anyone that's been affected by cancer. What is this person talking about? Right. And now, it was like uh, an alienated, nobody, alienated we, disease. Know, growing up in my community, in my home, my mother forbid us from saying even the word for fear that you may get it. So you never even say the oh. word. It's, 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 it's that illness, you know, but we never say the word. It's almost like Voldemort, you okay, know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> he has no name. And so uh, yeah. we never, we, were, we grew up this way. And so as we got older, I mean, and now, how many people can we name? Uh, maybe not necessarily within our direct families, but people that we know within the community, for example, that, that somehow have gone through affected, this, yeah. that are in, you know, in remission or have passed. And so uh, there's no other reason but to somehow be connected to something that affects one in two of us today. Absolutely. Uh, and there are how many of us in this room right now? Just make a quick calculation, you know, and knock on wood. Uh, and so 
to me, it became part of my passion. Uh, it became uh, something that I got involved in as well, being a cyclist when I was younger uh, through the Live Strong Foundation. I knew the wonderful work that they were doing, raising $600 million for cancer research. Uh, I felt sort of, uh, I guess, a, a, not a need, but a, a, a desire to want to be involved in, in the capacity that I hold here, but also as an individual to try to bring about some awareness and, and, and do something, at least whatever I can do to, to raise funds. No, I think that's great. We're going to take a short break because we haven't taken because we're having so much fun talking. But uh, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Jewelry ki dunia mein kabil atmad naam Al Najaf Jewelers hamare yahan jadid aur ala meyar ki tamam kisam ki jewelry dastiyab hai Singapore aur Dubai ki khoobsurat jewelry churiyan jhumke baliyan bracelet mangalsutra necklace rani har heere ki anguthiyan aur bahut kuch zevrat ki maramat kharido farohat ya tabdili ki sahulat visit kijiye 1020 Jantalon West call kijiye 514495 0101 Pari Dollar Store and they see grocery. Sadi kol tamam ke samde Pakistani or Indian grocery available hai. Masale, ready to eat food, chai, dale, chawal, atta, achar, nimko, sweet, khon mehndi aur is to alawa herbal saban, toothpaste, shampoo bhi available hai. Pari Dollar Store te thadi party nu char chand laan vaste har ke samde decoration available hai. School bag, kitchen wear, electric wear aur bachiyan de gubare yaan to alawa khadon और बहुत सारिया चीजा अवेलेबल ने ऑल इन वन रूफ क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट बेस्ट सर्विस वी आर ओपन सेवन डेज अ वीक विजिट अस वन वन जीरो नाइन हाई मन ड्राइव डी डी ओ नियर गुरुद्वारा कॉल करो फाइव वन फोर एट वन फोर फोर सिक्स जीरो नाइन सात सौ छियासी हलाल रेस्टोरेंट गुजशत बीस सालों से कम्युनिटी की खिदमत हमारे यहाँ तमाम पाकिस्तानी खाने मसलन बरयानी बटर चिकन शाही पनीर चिकन कढ़ाई मटन कढ़ाई फिश पकौड़ा लाहौरी फिश चिकन कबाब मिक्स वेजिटेबल्स और हलीम वगैरह हफजान सेहत और माहिर तजर्बाकार शेफ के जेर निगरानी तैयार किए जाते हैं फैमिली एंड फ्रेंडली माहौल फैमिली और दोस्तों के साथ विजिट कीजिए एट फाइव वेस्ट मॉन्ट्रियाल कॉल कीजिए फाइव And we're back with Mr. Bass here in Pierrefonds. So tell me about the Ride to Conquer Cancer, which well, is this weekend, yes, correct? Yes, the Ride to Conquer Cancer uh, started 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's something that I've done uh, five years. Uh, and uh, after that, I got involved in other fundraising efforts. So there are a lot of folks that get involved to ride it. It's this weekend. They ride from Montreal to Quebec City. They stop over in Trois-Rivières, and then they ride the last stretch into Quebec City. Not only is it an opportunity to raise funds and awareness for cancer, but it's also to mobilize as a community and uh, do this wonderful ride through small town Quebec, really, and go all the way to Quebec City by bike. It's a wonderful accomplishment, uh, not only for the folks that are riding it for the first time, but also for the survivors that are doing right. this. That uh, is quite challenging for the recreational riders. And the weather is going to be this. perfect this Fantastic. weekend, so yeah. it's great. Good luck to all of them. Yes, good luck to all of you. Um, now, one last thing. I actually want, well, we're going to continue this, but one thing I wanted to mention to you. I am 2013's North American Top Designer winner for Cashmere Canada Cancer. Wow, yeah. fantastic. So I raised $18,000 in 2013. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, for a dress I made out of bathroom tissue. Wow. Which is in a museum. So I'm very connected to cancer um, on every level. So if there's anything ever happening in Rocks Roar Pierrefonds, please let me know. Fantastic. Um, I like to say I wear the, the hat like you wear many hats, as I do as well. Um, it's nice to feel connected to something that you feel like you're helping. I, I don't know if we're ever going to cure the disease, but I think we'll get close enough to it to make people feel a little bit more safer and more um, reassured that there is something out there that's helping them. And obviously that means for every illness, um, AIDS, leukemia, um, cystic fibrosis, or whatever it is. And so I'd love to invite you to a fashion show, Cystic Fibrosis, which is in September. Um, it's where I launch my collection, and I'd love for you to come. Um, it's a great event. Um, it's, it's very luxurious in Montreal. We're trying to get people to wear more red carpet and dress up in a costume. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think it'd be a great opportunity for you to meet uh, a lot of people from different districts and different areas 
The other thing I wanted to say was that I was very nervous coming here today, and I'm normally never nervous, and everybody out there, all my fans and my, my watchers know this. The reason being is sometimes when you hear something that you're not familiar with, it's hard to get adjusted to. So, and I'm not gonna lie, I sat there in my car this morning and I Googled and I, I informed myself and I was trying to find out. And then I was like, what are you doing, Suella? Seriously? He's just a person. And I say this out of respect because you even said it, I'm not just a mayor. So I had to say, he's just a person. I'm gonna to talk to him like I talk to everybody. And I'm really happy because this is one of the first times I've actually talked to someone so long without a commercial, which I mentioned to you before. That means there's a strong connection in some way, shape, or form, which I know future going forward, we're definitely gonna do a lot of work together. Um, hence, cooking, because we love cooking. And then maybe we'll do something fashion related, because I've noticed you like to dress I, up. I, I, so I, that's I, a yeah, good. I, I like to dress, folks. No, you, 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 you mentioned it. You know, sometimes when we're in this position, we're held, uh, yes, we're held in high esteem, and it's a position that we hold with, uh, with great uh, pride. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes we're treated as something more than what we are. Yeah. And uh, it's flattering, but at the end of the day, we're still regular people who have different f passions and, and, and motivations and inspirations in their lives who bring us to that position. And I mentioned it earlier. I mean, I'm so many other things. And those of you that are connected to my social media know that I am many things before I become a mayor. And maybe right. that's what makes me uh, connected to the people like I've been through the last number of years. And so I, I, I don't want to change that ever. No. I'm a regular person like everybody else. Uh, and, and the mayor is just a title I hold uh, in a profession and in a commitment to the community. Uh, nothing more than that. And and uh, I, I was actually nervous about doing this. I'm still nervous because uh, <laughs> now I'm thinking really? of some of the opportunities that we might have in the future. And I don't know if they have in these fashion shows, you know, sizes that may fit me. But uh, if they do, I, I would love to participate even in, uh, in something like that. Oh, my God. He said it here on Prime <laughs> TV. And I'm going to go back to the board of directors because I'm a part of it on cystic fibrosis for the hospital. I am going to mention that part. Now, I, I am because we do have a lot of people that are connected to the community that do radio or do TV or are singers and actors and artists that actually volunteer their time to be on the runway. So maybe we'll have to find you a designer that can Fantastic. put you in an outfit. Fantastic. Um, we'll look into that Fantastic. for sure. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, I wanted to ask you, what have you seen by working with the South Asian community? Um, I'm going to say West Island in general, uh, obviously Roxborough and uh, Pierrefonds. So how do you, how do you, how do you say your experience has been with people like us? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, I'm glad you asked that question because for the last four years, I sat on the executive committee with Denny Coderre. And uh, aside from being responsible for sports and procurement, I was also in charge of or responsible for uh, communities of uh, diverse origins. And uh, I had an opportunity in Montreal to uh, attend a lot of functions and get close to many of our communities. And, and I've always said it publicly, privately, the South Asian community is a vibrant community in, in, in Pierrefonds, Roxborough, but in Montreal as well, uh, that are involved in all spheres of society, uh, loving, caring people, uh, from the Pakistani community to the others within the South uh, Asians. Uh, for me, I've always had positive interactions. I've always met people that were interested and in wanting to be engaged and involved in their community that participate uh, in any way that they can. And uh, we've been quite supportive. I mean, I've been very supportive of all our communities, but I've always uh, been close to some of them more than others, mm -hmm. and because Pierrefonds Roxborough has a high concentration of South Asian uh, communities, uh, we've we've become family, all of us. And so, uh, I'm very close to to the people that live in my community, and uh, the Pakistani community, South Asian community, is very strong. And uh, and like I said, uh, loving, caring people who only want to do good. And uh, how you. can you not be in support of? of a community that is always there for you uh, from, from, from day one. And so all, only had positive interactions. Well, thank you. Um, I think every community um, within West Island and, and people that we grew up with, and like I grew and the reason I know Greek, I, um, I was joking, I didn't learn it overnight, obviously. I grew up in Point Claire. Can I just stop you for a second? Yeah. Because you just segued right into it. Like I tell all the people here, they've all come from the Greeks at some point. Yeah. And so that's why. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. Because I grew up with a bunch of Greek people. 
and a Greek community. And because I look like I was from Cyprus, a lot of times I'd get into the house and they'd be like, you know, um, they would say something to me. And I'm like, Demilalinikas, which means I don't speak Greek. And like, you know Greek? I'm like, no, I'm not Greek. Yeah, you're from Cyprus. I'm like, no, I'm not from Cyprus. So, and then I learned um, a lot of the other words. And I said, just teach me the important ones. Like, I'm cold. I don't want it. I love you, but I'm sorry. You know, so that's why I, I, uh, I loved it. I loved the way they spoke. I loved the food. I loved everything about it. And I think the uniting the cultures of, of West Island together is so important now, especially for our children. Um, I think we grew up differently than our children are growing up now, um, obviously with all the things that are happening in the world. So it's nice to do things in the community, which I'm really looking for. I'm going to keep going back to Amazing Race and that food network, and I'm so on it because after I'm not going to leave you alone from that. Uh, mixing the, the two cultures, East meets West, is great. Um, Pakistan community is a very strong community in, um, in Montreal, I'm going to say. Um, sometimes we get lost in translation and I'm going to be honest, we do. Uh, I'm born and raised here, so I'm a French Canadian Muslim. And a lot of times people, you know, they say, well, how does this community work? And I'll be honest, I don't know. Um, because sometimes we're connected to our community very closely, and sometimes we're not. And that's what I'm saying, lost in translation. There's a lot of things that are happening in Montreal that we don't know about, and then vice versa. And I think uniting them together for this event that you just said for next, I'm assuming spring, summer next year, right? We're hoping to do it uh, next year. Yeah, because yes. we don't come out in the cold. No, I'm just we. kidding, we do. <laughs> I'm just we. joking. We do, we hibernate in the winter. Um, because we need to keep our color. <laughs> do you see what I mean? <laughs> so um, I think that's going to be a really interesting factor. And I'm really humbled that you were kind of nervous about meeting me. I, mean, that's I was joking. Legit. Oh, you were? Okay, well, no, there I we was go. a bit joking. nervous. <laughs> but, um, we talk about the food initiative. Uh, yes. In, in uh, September, uh, we have International Day festivities here where we oh, put okay. in all our cultures uh, together and we celebrate our diversity through music, through food. I mean, we want to be known for more than just our food. We have a culture that's behind all of that. And so what we do in Pierrefonds at Roxborough here is that we have our International Day festivities where we have different acts that perform, food samples. Do you have the dates so for that? On. It's in September. All okay. the information can be found uh, through our social media and through our website. And uh, what is your social media and website, please? It's well, you go to Arondissement Pierrefonds Roxboro on Facebook, uh, and you can go to uh, search Pierrefonds Roxboro through the Ville de Montréal uh, website, and you can get an access to our links and uh, and know when are all our events. And uh, we we take okay, pride. so we'll make sure to put all those yeah. links attached to this program, so that way you guys can book and reserve your dates and know what's happening for the next few months to come. That's right. We also have uh, next year PCHS, which is the school facing us here. I've been challenged by the, uh, the cooking uh, class uh, to have a cook-off. Oh. I uh, was a judge uh, for one of their, uh, their contests that they had, their food uh, initiatives, and so they had me as a iron uh, chef base oh uh, to God. be one of the judges. And okay, so, I want to uh, do that. I was challenged. I was challenged, <laughs> and so I, I, I don't know if I want to go because I may embarrass uh, the person who challenged me. Oh. Uh, and so, uh, so you uh, had to cook? I'm going to cook, and she will cook, and uh, if you're listening... Uh, uh, Tracy, uh, I'm coming for you, and uh, oh we will God. make uh, this a social media, Facebook Live, and uh, we'll see what everyone's made of, but all in fun. And again, joking aside, uh, these are wonderful initiatives that bring me closer to the people and make everyone understand that we can be connected with all segments of the population. Yes. You talked about the South Asian community. The other thing that's, that's special and wonderful about the South Asian community is that it is a multi-generational community that everyone gets involved in the different events that they hold. Mm -hmm. Whereas some communities, it tends to be a lot more the elders. Yeah. And the South Asian community has done a wonderful job in, in, in keeping that multi-generational uh, uh, multi sort of gap we've, in place. You know, we've always been there. forced to go everywhere with our families, so it's we wonderful. really have no choice. It's, it's like wonderful. you're coming, there's no, you know, no argument, you got to come. So it's like we say we, we go to someone's house, we bring a village. Yeah. You know, it's not like just two, all the kids couldn't come, they had homework and they had an exam. They have to graduate, who cares? Like we don't care about that, you That's know, right. like just you just have to come, you have to go there, you have to sit in front of your aunt who makes no sense whatsoever and just listen to her talk <laughs> and eat the food that you don't want to eat because you don't like, like some people don't like spices, you know, obviously you must, you look like a man who likes spices. I love spices, okay. but I can't eat uh, a lot of that publicly because oh, okay. uh, I, I know okay, it, I'll eat, eat it at home. <laughs> 
Uh, Just and, drink and a lot of yogurt after. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it's it yogurt. Work. It's it doesn't yogurt. work. It's it doesn't yogurt. work for me. Yeah, it's called everything. lessie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll go a little light on the spices here, Mr. Bass and uh, Mr. Bass, sorry. And um, I think we'll take another short break. And right after that, we're going to wrap it all up and then uh, give you guys uh, more information on how to contact what's happening in Pierfond Roxborough and other information that may seem um, interesting to follow him. Be right back. <laughs> Jewelry ki dunia mein kabile atmat naam Al Najaf Jewelers. Hamare yaha jadid aur ala miyar ki tamam kisam ki jewelry dastiyab hai. Singapore aur Dubai ki khubsurat jewelry, churiya, jumke, baliya, bracelet, mangat sutar, necklace, rani har, hire ki anguthiya aur bahut kuch. Zevrat ki maramat, kharido frohat ya tabdili ki sahulat. Visit ki jee 1020 Jantalon West. Call ki jee 514-495-0101. Pari Dollar Store and they see grocery. Sadikul Tamam ke samde Pakistani or Indian grocery available. Masale, ready to eat food, chai, dale, chawal, atta, achar, nimko, sweet, khon mandi, or isto alawa herbal saban, toothpaste, shampoo be available. Party Dollar Store te, 30 party no char chan larn was te, har ke samde decoration available. School bag, kitchen wear, electric wear, or bachya de gubare ya to alawa, khadon. Or available. All in one roof, quality product, best service. We are open seven days a week. Visit us 1109 Hyman Drive, DDO near Gurdwara. Call Karo 514-814-4609. Sasuchyasi Halal Restaurant. Guzashta B Salose Community Ki Hidmat Me Masroof. Best Halal Restaurant in Montreal. हमारे यहां तमाम पाकिस्तानी खाने मसलन बिरयानी बटर चिकन शाही पनीर चिकन कढ़ाई मटन कढ़ाई फिश पकोड़ा लाहौरी फिश चिकन कबाब मिक्स वेजिटेबल्स और हलीम वगैरह हफ्जाने सेहत और माहिर तजरबाकार शेफ के ज़ेर निगरानी तैयार किए जाते हैं फैमिली एंड फ्रेंडली माहौल फैमिली और दोस्तों के साथ विजिट कीजिए 850 जनता लॉन वेस्ट मॉन्ट्रियल कॉल कीजिए 5142700786 Hi, we're back now, and I'm going to ask you this question. Let's say I'm from Point Claire. Okay, so I live in Point Claire. My friends live in Dorval. We want to be involved with Roxborough and Pierrefonds. How would we do that? And obviously, we can do it, even though we live in a different. Um, what do we? What is it called? City. This is a borough of Pierrefonds. Borough. Yes. Borough. And we're one of the 19 boroughs. We're the only one that has the official bilingual status of the 19 boroughs on the island of Montreal. Oh, there I didn't are know that. reconstituted cities like Dollard, Kirkland, Point right. Claire, and so on. But we, with Roxborough, are part of, uh, of Montreal still. We run this borough like a city. Uh, okay. I have to tell you, we're part of the West Island. You asked about how can folks that live in our neighboring communities yeah. get involved. Well, first of all, they already do through their volunteer efforts in the nonprofit organizations, primarily the sports. But also, we have many events on the West Island. For example, the Rib Fest that we have for three days here, which is a major fundraiser for the Big Brothers Big Sisters West Island, which bring 30,000 people in three days here, wow. right here next to City Hall. We have Strangers in the Night, which is another major fundraiser. Strangers in the Night. Where we have Boy George and Culture Club that would be performing oh my God! in Fearful Rocksboro. Culture Club. Folks. And so, You're, are you going to say George Michael next or something? No, he's passed away. <laughs> no, I know, but Boy George is, Boy George is still playing. Wait, and he he's actually coming comes to Montreal. To Pierrefonds, Roxborough to play in Strangers okay. of the Night. And guys so, and girls from the 80s, we got to get our jam on because he's coming to Montreal. Um, he's coming to Pierrefonds. When? This is going to be in August. It's the last two weekends in August. Uh, one of them is okay. the Rib Fest, of course. Again, that okay. information can be found on social media. So everyone sort of on the West Island knows of the different events that take place throughout the territory. And in Pierrefonds, they already come to Pierrefonds as we go to Point Claire and Kirkland and some of the other communities because that's who we are as West Islanders and as a community. So... We welcome everyone and to get involved. I mean, if there's a message that I have for the youth in the South Asian community, particularly because that's what we're doing here today, yes. is that the youth has to understand that there are opportunities there and they have to be involved in 
community. It can't be that they expect you to go and grab them and bring them in. There are opportunities for the educated youth. They're more educated today than we will ever and have ever been. That's true. And so the youth have opportunities within cities, if that's what they choose to be. They have opportunities in politics, if that's what they want to do. We would ask them to reach out not only to the city officials, to the councillors, to myself through social media, Facebook, Twitter and all the others, but also to pick up the phone and call us or to drop by the office and meet us all here and see what some of the opportunities may be for them. But the important thing is to be engaged. This is how we were as youth where we got to where we are today, but this is what we ask the youth to do as well and not be waiting uh, for somebody to grab them. No, that's, that's very well said. It was a whole mouthful right there. And um, I agree with you 100%. And I am on board to anything. Like everybody, I love to do anything, anything and everything. So if you're like doing anything, I am now officially, I'm going to shake your hand on Fantastic. this, involved. Fantastic. Okay. I will bring my whole village with me, wherever they're from, to you, even if they're from downtown or South Shore, because I have a lot of people from all over and they always want to know what's happening. And it's not just about the mothers it's not about the fathers i believe it's a community thing so it's like the whole family's got to bring your cat bring your dog okay maybe not the dogs because it's harder for the dogs maybe a cat and the carrier but seriously like we're all going to be involved i'm telling you this today i'm warning you Fantastic. today's meeting I, is going to prolong you. very very long so i want to say um thank you so much for meeting me today thank you very much for having me i'm honored that you so took much. the time um i'm looking forward to working with you in the future and i want to say this man is not only honorable fashionable, smells good, <laughs> like it's smell you from here, um, intellectually, um, I'm going to say the word intellectually humble. Does that thank you. define you correctly? I like it. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to spending more time with him and developing on what's happening in the Roxborough Pier Fonds borough and the funny thing is I didn't know and I'm going to completely cut myself off because I do this a lot the word riding can you just define that before we should writing yeah what does it mean well it, in different at different levels of government a riding will determine what they're who they're representing for me uh, it's not a riding it's the borough of Pierrefonds Roxborough which is two X cities that merged and became one borough for the island of Montreal. And this has historic relevance since 2001 okay. and then in 2005 again. Without getting really deep into it, it is really essentially, if you will, the riding of two ex-cities, which is Pierrefonds and Roxborough, that were amalgamated back, uh, back then to become one of the boroughs. Okay, see, I learned something new today. I didn't know what it meant, and now you just defined it. Um, so I want to say, Efkaristo. Fir Milenge. Pier Milenge. Did I say it right? Pier? Pier Milenge. Oh my God, that's close. amazing. Th I was close. Was I was close, uh, now, folks. Now you A can for say effort. Shukriya. Shukriya. Sablog. Sablog. Hamare. Hamare. Shoko. Shoko. Dekniglie. Dekniglie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know what? That was great. <laughs> I, I tried, folks. That was great. That was great. Thank you, everybody. Hudafis from Prime TV, Sohila Nyazi. Asalaamu Alaikum. Jewelry ki dunia mein kabli atamad naam Al Najaf Jewelers. Hamare yaha jadid aur ala miyar ki tamam kisim ki jewelry dastiyab hai. Singapore aur Dubai ki khubsurat jewelry, churiya, jumke, baliya, bracelet, mangat sutar, necklace, rani har, hire ki anguthiya aur bahut kuch. Zevrat ki maramat kharido frohat ya tabdili ki sahulat. Visit ki jiye 1020 Jantalon West. Call ki jiye 514-495-0101. Pari Dollar Store and they see grocery. Sadikal tamam ke samde Pakistani or Indian grocery available. Masale, ready to eat food, chai, dale, chawal, atta, achar, nimko, sweet, khon mehndi, or is to alawa herbal sabun, toothpaste, shampoo be available. Party Dollar Store te, 30 party no char chand learn was te, har ke samde decoration available, school bag, kitchen wear, electric wears, or bachya do gubare ya to alawa, khadon. Or available. All in one roof, quality product, best service. We are open seven days a week. Visit us 1109 Hyman Drive, DDO near Gurdwara. Call Karo 514-814-4609. Sasuchyasi Halal Restaurant. Gazashta B Salose, community ki khidmat mein masroof. Best halal restaurant in Montreal. 
हमारे यहाँ तमाम पाकिस्तानी खाने मसलन बरयानी बटर चिकन शाही पनीर चिकन कढ़ाई मटन कढ़ाई फिश पकौड़ा लाहौरी फिश चिकन कबाब मिक्स वेजिटेबल्स और हलीम वगैरह हफजान सेहत और माहिर तजर्बाकार शेफ के जेर निगरानी तैयार किए जाते हैं फैमिली एंड फ्रेंडली माहौल फैमिली और दोस्तों के साथ विजिट कीजिए 850 जनता लॉन वेस्ट मॉन्ट्रियाल कॉल कीजिए 514-270-0786